Good afternoon, everyone. NOAA's Next Generation Weather Satellite malfunctioned. And what's interesting in seeing ice, all four satellites that maintain key records of Arctic and Antarctic sea ice are going to all have disruptions at the exact same time. They even stated last year that the next possible replacements won't be able to launch at least until the early 2020s. It's going to cause a gap. Fast forward to this week's NOAA malfunction. Now they're going to push that back even further as if the engineers can't figure out what's going on. All right in time for this next cool water pulse to enter the Arctic, causing more sea ice. And isn't that convenient? They're not going to be able to map it. Nor all the mass budget increases of ice on Greenland. It's almost as if they're going to disrupt this so they don't show you the increases because they don't want to have to explain it. And during these times of uncertainty with our weather, you're absolutely going to need to grow some of your own food. TrueLeafMarket.com, heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on our planet, as well as sprouts and microgreens. The Adapt 2030 link is below in the description box, as well as all the links to tonight's images and stories. And speaking of that, the tri-weekly podcast, Mini Ice Age Conversations, that's in the description box below as well. Just click the link. It'll take you up to the newest episodes. Kate Hart, 72. We're talking about vibrational frequency and sound healing. If you hadn't seen the latest news, NOAA's next generation weather satellite just malfunctioned and it might not be fixable. It was set to operate for 20 years, and what it was going to do, it's GOES-17. It was going to take a look at natural disasters, wildfires, volcanic eruptions. Western half of the United States, interesting launching on the time to study volcanic eruptions anyway. Haven't had any there for hundreds of years, yet they're going to send a satellite up to specifically study eruptions in the western U.S. Quirky on the timing with the grand solar minimum increases. Now what they're saying also is the launch of these next set of satellites could be pushed back if the experts can't figure out how to or to fix what's been going wrong. They're not going to send any other satellites up if they don't know what went wrong with the first ones because it's going to have the same malfunction because all the parts are built by the same companies. So the story goes. But they tell you and assure you right now we have an operational constellation serving us. Now this is with weather predictions, etc. But it falls right in line with all the Arctic ice mapping that we're used to getting This is GO-17 under construction. Now, what did it mean by gaps? Let's take a look. Seeing ice. These four satellites used to maintain a key record of Arctic and Antarctic sea ice. They're also giving data for weather forecasting across the Arctic, maintained by the U.S. military services in some instances here, like NSIDC, which I'll show you in a second. U.S. Department of Defense, that's the purple. So three out of four of those. And you notice, even though it's not just U.S. satellites which are aging, the Japanese satellite data set also, look, there's going to be a break at 2019 to 2021. This is incredibly interesting on the timing because they're telling you in advance that this whole ICE satellite data set is going to be interrupted. Now, when I mentioned the United States military taking care of some of the ICE measurements, the Defense Meteorological Satellite Program, called DMSP, what this means is at least three of these aging satellites are all going to die at the same time. They're not going to have any replacements. And NOAA malfunctioning last week just told you they're not going to launch anything else up there until they figure out what's going on. Interesting in the timing on all of this. Next possible replacements. They're talking about they wouldn't launch until early 2020s anyway. But now they're talking about pushing it further back. So you're going to tell me that we're not going to have ice measurements for four or five years satellite coverage up there? And you might ask yourself, why would that make any kind of story in the climate debate? Well, if we look at David Dilley's research, the Arctic water pulses, this next pulse going up there with the Atlantic cooling temperatures is going to absolutely cause more sea ice because it's not going to be melting from beneath. And each successive pulse from this point forward, and it's going to get cooler and cooler. And we're heading into a grand solar minimum. The Atlantic water temperatures are cooling beyond any expectation of even the experts of how fast it's cooling. And the Arctic ice gains that we're seeing this year. Left side, this is from Polar Portal. 
right side is what you're getting from the NSIDC. That's the satellite data set I was referencing earlier. Now I put these side by side for the comparison. Notice there's a few discrepancies on where there's less ice being showed in the NSIDC set compared to where the DMI, the European agencies are showing it. Notice north of Alaska there. Actually, it'll be to the right of Alaska if you're looking at that chart. Those two giant areas that show no ice on the left side, DMI showing ice, but the NSIDC set does not show ice. Also, what's going to disappear when these satellites go down measurements of the Greenland mass budget. Now, it increased 600 billion tons this year of new ice. And it's just really irregular timing that all the satellites are going to go down and we're getting more Arctic ice and more ice on Greenland. And it's supposed to even get more ice as the pulse is going in from the Atlantic are going to cool the underside of the ice even further. And then while all this is happening, we're going to have no satellite coverage for four years. And we're getting into the coolest part of the grand solar minimum around 2024. You need to ask yourself, is this all purposeful? Because it's absolutely the strangest thing of circumstances when we're going to blank out all of this ice coverage for the next several years as it increases. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you like this type of information, please remember to subscribe and click that bell to get the latest updates. And you can also get more in-depth information, try weekly podcast, mini ice age conversations. The links are in the description box. Just click on it. It'll take you out to the newest episode. Social media links. If you're looking for something in text and images, and I'll see you next video.